to read. Yeah, just uh, we're live now, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Good evening, Comfort. Hello, <laughs> my dear. Good you evening. you out of the screen and then welcome you back in. But as we are warming up, okay, uh, I'm just going to play because I want people to know we have started okay. our auction for a cause because mm -hmm. this is all about celebrating or marking zero tolerance to FGM. Yes. So... Um, I want people to know of the importance of the day itself before I come to you. Mm -mm. But um, let's see what we can do. So um, stay where you are. Okay. And don't go away. <laughs> and I will bring you back in shortly. Let's Auction for a cause to mark Zero Tolerance Day to FGM starts today. Place your bids for your favourite African pixie necklace and women vocational centre bags. The highest bidder will be announced live on Monday 7th of February at 7pm. Bids close at 12pm on the 7th of February. So place your bids now. Auction for a cause to mark Zero Tolerance Day to FGM starts today. Place your bids for your favourite African pixie necklace and women vocational centre bags. The highest bidder will be announced live on Monday 7th of February at 7pm. Bids close at 12pm on the 7th of February. So place your bids now. Auction for a cause to mark Zero Tolerance to FGM starts today. Place your bids for your favourite African pixie necklace and women vocational centre bags. The highest bidder will be announced live on Monday 7th of February at 7pm. Bids close at 12pm on the 7th of February. So place your bids now. Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to this chat with Dr. Comfort Momo and her colleague Tina and Hawada Bosise. And I would let the ladies tell you why today is such an important day and why they are having this little chat with us for about an hour. So if you can grab your tea, your coffee, your water, whatever you can have, just do not grab the gin just yet because we want you to stay focused. Don't grab the glass of wine just yet to unwind because we want you to pay close attention to what these women have to say. And for me, it's an honor, it's a privilege, and I'm so, so happy to be in the midst of these women. I mean, Christmas, we had a boogie woogie, right? But I'm gonna bring them on and I'll start first with Tina because I know Tina has to go away. But um, Tina, I'm gonna bring you on to the show. Hi, oh, sorry, I, I have to be in my bedroom because my daughter's, I've got schoolwork going on, so no, um, it's anyway. okay. This is this is a casual conversation. Ah, uh, okay. Well, how are okay. you? And how things get? Are you all set for Sunday? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how how I want to just say how this thing sort of like transpired because yes. um, comfort and I go back a long way. We used to work together in sexual health, and yeah. um, about a year and a half ago, she. She comfort's been doing like lovely walks every Saturday and we we That's walk right. about 5k and it's really inspiring and therapeutic and it's time to talk about all our troubles and stuff and we feel really um good about it. And then um because of the vital work that she does for FGM, um she realized that she would like to do like a, a sponsored walk and and do the event so because in my other job i'm a fundraiser for a can cancer charity a local cancer charity so we worked in partnership together to sort of like get it on board and you know plan out the walk so it's not so stressful it will be a 3k walk which is around a local really nice local park there's you can sort of like you know it's not too strenuous it's not up hills down hills it's it's on a pathway um you can bring children or dogs and just like twice round um we're going to be having um some nice baseball hats for you to wear we've got yeah. promotional 
um, material. So I'm going to have a nice goodie bag for you. Um, we're also going to be having a little sort of merchandise store selling good, good, like good. really nice jewellery and yeah. hats and stuff. So all that money will just go towards Comfort's cause, which obviously she's going to el elaborate a bit later. So Definitely. the walk, you know, it's at your... <laughs> it's at your own sorry it's at your own pace and I think yes. you know you can do it in about an hour but you know, you know it's just a really like therapeutic like great way for all people to you know get together have some mm. exercise be in the fresh air and raising vital funds so good yeah and, and good for our health as well because yes we're raising funds for a good cause but this could be another opportunity for people to at least have their weekly exercise, walking in yeah. a lovely, lovely environment. The scenery is one to die for. And yeah. yes, we're welcoming everybody. It's open space. Everybody, it's open to everybody. <laughs> Whatever. Bring your mask you know. along, but it's open space and we're going to have a great time. And many people have been asking comfort that they want to come along. So um, I'm going to be there waving the flag and jumping up and down as I usually do. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> it is. It is. It's a really, it's a really beautiful park. I don't know if many of you follow Comfort on Facebook, but she does yes. post every week yes, about yes, does, Comfort's yeah. walks, and it <laughs> seriously, it's re really inspired me because, like last year, I could not walk twice around that park, and she's wow. given me the motivation and the stuff. You know, I've got walking boots, I've got the gear. Um, and I, I, I feel great. And, the, you know, the, the most important thing is, is, you know, we connect with each other. We talk to That's each right. other yeah. on this yeah. walk while, while yeah. being in the fresh air. Um, yeah. Just a little bit about, you know, like sponsorship and how if you want to, uh, I think Comfort's got forms if people want to, like, sponsor you to do it or you can just go on her Just Giving page or or whatever. So um, it's quite easy to, to, do, to do that. Yeah, well, I'm excited about it and I'm so looking forward to it. And it's been a long time coming, to be honest. And I think we so needed this. And it's just perfect timing. It's a, an opportunity for us to put the COVID pandemic to one side and just get together and meet friends and connect. I wish the park was close to my home. I'll be there every day. <laughs> I'll be there yeah. every day. Yeah. But um, thank you so much, Tina. Um, I know yeah. you're busy and you're... Yeah, I, I have another meeting soon. So um, yes, but it's, right. it, it, it's 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 going to be great. Also, I mean, we've got like loads of merchandise, so um, loads of like designer like jewelry and stuff. So we're just going to have it on on the store, so people can just put you know some money in and stuff, and some hats and things as well. So it's all just different ways, you know, to raise money. But raise you know, money. everyone come come along and just meet the team and yeah. you know get behind us because it is for a really really good fantastic, so. fantastic. all right then thank you yeah, thank you so much and you have a See wonderful later. evening regards to the I... family for me okay so as you have heard tina talking about why this was ne needed what the walk is about and now we're just going to bring the woman herself behind this incredible initiative which she has been doing for years and for those that know me, no comfort, I call her my angel. She's my literally my guardian angel. But um, I know she, she's, she's, she's had enough of me calling her angel. She's the angel on earth. But I'm going to bring comfort now, a remarkable midwife who has worked tremendously with women's health and doing such incredible work in the UK and elsewhere, raising awareness about public health, health and well-being, particularly maternity health. And she has served the length and breadth of the United Kingdom, seen women from all works of life background, you know, and she has trained thousands and thousands of medics, professionals working around maternity, working on FGM. But I will let her come through now so she can tell us all about this incredible initiative. And um, Comfort, why walk the walk? <laughs> to everybody listening to us and can i say a big thank you to <laughs> ali matu for organizing this evening because 
you are the brain behind media and all that and i really appreciate you my dear sister why walk the walk um like tina has rightly said i well i've been walking every sunday for the past 10 years with a barnet group um we meet at orange tree in totridge every sunday so i started that just before my 10 and uh, my 50th birthday for my 50th just to kind of um inspire myself just to see what we have around barnet in terms of the nature in terms of the parks and all that and that was, that's been fantastic and during lockdown obviously we were so well many of us are so depressed so didn't know what to do where to go to and all that and i decided i was going to walk every day regardless rain sun shine or whatever and i started doing that and then um i had other people joining me like tina sarah eileen eileen and i also worked together um which she joined the um walk as well almost every day with me and um this the the walk has been very inspiring seeing the nature and just looking at the beauty of what we have around us in barnet here it's been really fantastic so hence i decided with other people like yourself our and other activists that we're going to do walk the walk to end fgm to raise more awareness and like um tina has already alluded to is about coming out to kind of enjoy ourselves to celebrate post pandemic post covid and post lockdown to help our physical and our mental health and also to enjoy what we have in barnet which i'm really really proud of Brilliant. Um, so, yes, thank you so much, Comfort, for that. And yes, Bennett has been doing some remarkable work, but you're also in partnership with another organization known, I mean, they're known for their work, but I'm not going to call their name. Who else will be joining in terms of supporting this great work that you're doing? Wow. Um, um, we, we are so lucky because this is the first of the kind here in London, I will say, in terms of walking the walk for to end fgm we've got right. um a brother an activist um artist coming from belgium um godfrey coming to support us we've got a fantastic local slimming world whetstone branch which i belong to they've been very supportive especially the lead Susie Cohen, I'm sure she won't mind me mentioning <laughs> her name. She's been very supportive. She's been um, inviting people because she herself, she does lots, lots of walks and running and she um, do lots of charity works as well. And also we have, a, I, I cannot forget my friend Olu Olu, who is supporting as well. Olu Olu obviously is an African, um, African food stores and they sell lots of african um foods like gari pounded jam palm wine and so on and they've been very supportive so they're going to give us the goodie bags as well and um, we're using their bag to put stuff in the bag and also fantastic um friend of mine um who is a consultant he has sponsored the baseball cap and he and his team have paid for this baseball cap and we've ordered about 100 which cost right. about 400 pounds so mm -hmm. again i must say a big big thank you to him i don't know if you want me to mention his name or not but, I'll leave oh, yeah. it not but thank you so much for supporting us yes not you yet. know who you are <laughs> of course and many people i'm, I'm gonna come to some of them some of yeah. them are, are already preparing <laughs> oh god so many so many people but i can't mention everybody's name i have mm. my um walking team on sundays mm. i call them the sunday walkers yeah. i've got my Totridge women's group they're coming yeah. as well i've got 
concern coming as oh, well. Oh yes. Yeah. So it, it's fun. It will be fantastic. And I'm going to bring music. You know me and music and oh, dancing. Otherwise, it's going to be boring. I'll, I'll dance for anyone who's gonna walk. I'll compete. The, the <laughs> next thing walk is how long I'm gonna keep dancing. Like like Tina said, is is. For us to come and enjoy ourselves, meet people. And also I've got a lady coming who is um she makes lots of juices. Ooh. Um and she's got a business. So again, it's about meeting people, interacting with people and yeah. exchanging ideas. So there's That's lots true. of people coming and with Fantastic. different um stuff. Yeah. Oh good, good. But, I mean, we are here to mark an important time of the year for many of us, activists, mm. survivors, women talking constantly, and men even, about the dangers of FGM. We've seen through this pandemic the issue escalating a little bit in some parts of the world, yeah. particularly in Africa. I mean, we have had a 21-year-old girl died in December in Sierra Leone. Yeah. So FGM is as current an issue... Mm than any time of the year. Yes. And I know sometimes people don't know what FGM is. We keep talking mm. about it. We keep raising awareness for years. You were the catalyst, or you and many others are the catalyst behind where we are today in terms of successes around FGM, in terms of women like me having confidence to go to see their doctors about it, talk openly about it and removing the stigma, the taboo, that surrounds conversations when we talk about women's health, particularly young women. Now, Comfort, what is FGM? Right, before I go into what FGM is, um, Alimato, it's really sad to hear about the 21-year-old that died in December because yes, yes. for the work that many people have been doing before my time, during my time, and in your time, and even now, Yes, it's really yes. sad that people are still dying from, from FGM. And, That's right. Um, yes, we've done lots of work, but we still have more to do, more mm -hmm. to do. We still need to work together, um, especially in Africa. So what yeah. is FGM? I'll just quickly read the definition by WHO. FGM comprises of all procedure involving partial or total removal of the external female genital organs or any other injury to the female genital organs for non-medical reasons. And that's the key, for non-medical reasons. Most um, carried out on young girls and between infancy and 15 years old. And it can happen at any age as um, we have just heard. And there are four different types of female genital mutilation. Um, type one is when the clitoris has been removed, either totally or partially. Type two, when the clitoris has been removed and the labia minora. And the type three is when the clitoris, the labia minora, and the majora has been removed and stitched together, leaving a pinhole for the passage of urine and menstrual flow. And we have a fourth type, which is unclassified, including mm. pricking, piercing, or doing all non-medical reason um, injury to the vulva area. Mm. Thank you so much. Now, I know over the years, you've seen so, so many women with complications and women who've been impacted by FGM. Now, why, why such... I mean, you have done this for so many years and you've never left the subject. Mm -hmm. Why the passion? Where does this come from? Why mm. are you so interested in making sure that women and girls' health is paramount, that mm. we see an end to such a, a horrific, in some mm. cases, horrific, yeah. and where women are left with terrible scars, yeah. you know, psychologically, physically, mentally, and mm. in some cases, even financially. There yeah. are people who have spent so much money, either through health, looking after themselves, or even paying to have it done. Yeah. Where does your passion come from? Um, this is a very good question. And it takes me back, back to my roots, back to Nigeria. Um, my passion started as I think as a teenager, and also when 
the passion grew when I started my general nursing um, in Nigeria, Lagos University, teaching hospital. I remember many of my colleagues then um, were talking about female genital mutilation. I'm talking about, this was in early 80s. I didn't know anything about female genital mutilation. Um, some will say to me how their sisters and their cousin died from excessive bleeding and also how um, nothing was done. This is a secret. This is part of the culture and all that. And I remember coming home one day from uni, went to my grandma and said to my grandma, ask question about FGM, what FGM is all about, does she know about it and all that. And I can remember my grandmother looked at me and thinking, what are you on about? Because obviously from her own tribe or her um, village, they don't practice FGM. Mm. And I was so disappointed, I always say, because you look at your grandmother as a very wise woman, um, she's got answers for everything. So I was so disappointed she didn't know what I was talking about. And I started researching on it. Um, and also the passion and interest around this, this is about women. Mm. This is about human rights. This is about women's rights and what gives other people the authority to remove our clitoris. What gives the what gives the community or the the circumciser or the 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 so-called rite of passage the the right to remove um um, girls and women's clitoris or labia without their consent. So for me, this is a passion because it's about human rights, it's about my right, it's about <sighs> working with women, mm. it's about women's rights, children's rights. And mm. each time I talk about it, I get really emotional. Yeah. I understand. And it's, I mean, in, in all, in all, facets of it in all areas that you can imagine yeah it's horrific it's de dehumane it's mm -hmm. it reduces a woman to something other than just an object yeah it doesn't make women feel valuable in their community not at all now, yes and and i and in, in many cases a lot of communities that practice fgm including mine of course and you've just mentioned nigeria sierra leone mm -hmm. for whatever reason there's this attachment to an issue that's actually leaving women and people are aware. You know, mm. I was shocked to, to learn recently, I was of the view that many people don't even know what FGM is, but actually they do know, they accept that it causes pain and suffering. They accept that it reduces women's rights or it affects women's rights. Mm. They accept that it's something that has to stop, but they're thinking because it's women, it doesn't matter. And I'm just thinking, exactly. that is not a nice thing to, to, to say. No. No. You know, if you accept that something is causing so much pain and suffering and it has to stop, then it has to stop. We yeah, can you do making, something about it. And do something about it. We cannot keep making excuses. We yeah. know globally, I mean, you know the numbers, but roughly how many women and girls are affected by FGM? Because I think sometimes when we put numbers to, to things, people will see the, 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 the impact and people mm. will see what it means and how far, you know, it goes. How many people do you think globally? Have been according to WHO and according to the figures we've, we've got, about 200 million women mm. and girls have been affected worldwide. And I always say to people, if you close your eyes and think deeply, as I'm closing my eyes, it is an alarming figure. It is mm. an alarming figure that we all need to start doing something about it. Yes. People have been working tirelessly in different parts of the world mm -hmm. to raise awareness, to end FGM, but more mm -hmm. still needs to be done. And you, and you and many others, but you in particular, and I've just seen Joy joining the conversation. Welcome. Hi, Joy. <laughs> Another mm -hmm. incredible colleague of mine from the United States of America, Rachel Bangura Davis, who's sort of bringing the voice of women into the fore in terms of talking about our rights as politicians, for those that want to be politicians, but actually centering the focus of women and women's rights 
within the conversation of our day-to-day -day conversation, basically. Um, so thanks for joining. And Farella Ryan Coker, another big friend of mine. In fact, she has also started recently walking and inviting oh, wow. us. Yes, and she's walking been talking is fantastic. Walking is I'm fun. telling you, I mean, I used it's to love free. Walking. You don't have to spend any money. This is it. <laughs> yeah. I used to love walking in Sierra Leone. I'd walk to school and I'd walk back. And I think people used to take the mickey out of me because they know I used to love walking and they'll tell me to go get things left, right and center. But <laughs> I find walking is therapeutic. But for me, walking mm. makes me think straight. If mm. I have a problem and I go out and I walk around, I somehow would have solutions to those problems. Yeah. I would use walking when I want to clear my mind and yeah. even sort of look after myself mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. a stressful day, just walk and, you know, yeah. Now, I know so many times we've talked about this issue. We know so many women, and this has become very clear, particularly in the UK, because we have the resources, we have the facility, and it's easy to provide these resources. What is the link, if there is any, have people said it sort of goes with mental health? Having well health and well being because you run the women's health and well being mm. at Guys and St Thomas's for many many years, and I know I was your client. Um, but but we we went there because we felt that was like a place of comfort, as the name mm. goes. Yeah, and we comfort. found that it, <laughs> it was a place of respite, but also getting together with other women. I know my colleague Howa is here, and she's going to be joining us shortly. But I wanted you to let those that don't know. What was so important about having a service catering to that particular area of women where we talk about our health, our mental health, physical health, you name it, not just about dealing with FGM per se, mm. but that the importance of health and well-being when it comes to these kind of traumatic experiences. Mm. Uh, like you've rightly said, Al Alima, is the clinic that we run that so many um, clinic now but when I first started we had just one clinic which was Harry Gordon's clinic in West London and guys and St Thomas's was the second one and also now we've got many clinics that support women and I guess the uniqueness and the um, benefit of the clinics is that for example our clinic at guys and St Thomas's was a one-stop clinic one stop, I mean, you come in, you're not just talking about female genital mutilation, we're talking about your general well being. Mm -hmm. We're looking at you from head to toe, we're looking at your physical needs, your psychological needs, your mental health needs as well. So it's not just one problem. If you come in, um, for, for many women, it might be the first time they actually raise the issues around FGM. They might come in to have smear tests and then you ask questions around their well-being and then you talk about female genital mutilation. Like you said earlier, with the youth I said it, many women, yes, they know they've been cut or they know something has happened to them as a child, but nobody has actually explained it to them in details. Mm -hmm. Nobody has actually used the term female genital mutilation because mm -hmm. it's known as something else in different parts of the world, especially mm -hmm. in Africa, for example, some cut it cutting, some cut mm -hmm. call it um, circumcision, circumcision yes. and so on. So again, the clinics that we provide here in the UK is like a lifeline to talk mm -hmm. about general well-being That's and right. if women need to be referred to other um, specialists like mm -hmm. psychotherapies, mm -hmm. um, psychologists and all that, we do make that referral. So it's very unique that it's a one-stop clinic. They have mm -hmm. what we call the infibulation. If women have type 3 FGM, we provide smear tests, we mm -hmm. um, re make referral for, we talk about breast um, examination, we talk about sure. breast cancer, we talk yeah. about general, general thing really, which is very yeah. good because sometimes, as you and I know, sometimes you go to your GP or you go to different clinics where they they have third, third time 
That's uh, right. Maybe five minutes for consultation. You don't even have time to. <laughs> they don't even ask. They don't even ask yourself. Yeah. Yes. So the clinics are very unique for that. Yes, yeah. Yes. And as we're at the clinic, I mean, you and others spearheaded this great and amazing work that has just changed the way we see FGM in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, from things that your GP now asking you, we have physiotherapists now asking, we have um, school nurses now dealing with this, you know, so it has come to the fore now in the UK. And I'm so mm -hmm. proud that women like you have led the way in making women like me feel better, healthier, and are able to do successful things in our community. Yeah. Now, this is a community event. I know this is not your first. You did the one is like, um, what was it? Cut it, no, um, <laughs> don't cut it, no. Oh, can, can touch it. <laughs> I was like, MC it Hammer. Something like that, yeah. I was like, MC Hammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we did at the, uh, the, the, the the dance hall that we all used to go in Camden. I forgot the in name. Camden in Camden Town, like, yeah. Camden Town, right. So comfort, walk the walk. I know you, you always give out these powerful names to the theme. So what we expect here, I know Tina said there will be goodies, there will be this, but what do you want people to expect when they're coming? So lazy folks like me who walk one hour, one step, one hour, <laughs> what should we expect on that day? Okay, walk the walk to end FGM, obviously. This is the first of the, of the kind, like I said, here in London, especially. We want you to come and enjoy yourself, basically. We want you to, we, we, we don't want to put the pressure on people thinking, oh my God, I'm going to walk the, the whole park twice or three times. No, you're just going to do what you can do. If you like, if you come, you want to sit down, you want to walk for one, um, you go once and you sit down and go next because we've got three hours. You, that's right. I guess that's why we expanded. We got from 12 o'clock to three, which is three hours. So you can do what you want. You can go in your own pace. When you're coming, obviously, mm. um, what we are going to do, we meet, the meeting point is by the car park. Mm -hmm. We meet by the, by the car park. We do the registration. And before we start, obviously, we give you all your goodie bags. We register mm -hmm. everybody. And also we have, Tina, which um, we spoke earlier, she's going to give a brief talk as well. And also we're having, little did you know that, my <laughs> sister Alima, you and Hawa, you're going to give a, a little talk as oh, well. Always, always, always. <laughs> and little did, did my sister, Joy Clark, knew as well. Your name is down as well. You're going to give a you little ready, talk Joy. as well. And also we have, um, like I said, God, um, Godfrey is coming from Belgium. Yeah. He's going to talk. Exactly. I'm so excited about that. And he's going to give us a little talk about his work. And yeah. uh, we, we really need to um, salute him because obviously as a man, he has done fantastic work around raising um, awareness around FGM. And he's an artist. And right. he's going to bring some of his work to show us. And yeah. also he has told me that he's going to donate one um, for yeah. auction for Global Comfort. So I'm excited. Yes. And um, yes, on that day, and then there'll be two other people that will talk. So we'll have brief um, talk before the war um, okay. itself. And also, like, like, like I said, it's, it's, like, it's going to be like a family outing. Yeah. Uh, family out, just come and exchange ideas, meet other people, and um, raise awareness. And like like I, I, I've been saying, this will be hopefully with your support and other people's support. It'll be a yearly thing that we do here in London. This would be brilliant, and not just That's on the a, aim, yeah, and it'll be in summer rather than in in winter. In winter. Yeah. and it's not going to be just about FGM. Yes, FGM. No, is no, no. Key theme of global well-being physical be, psychological and well-being yes, definitely yes. an issue affecting not just black and ethnic minority women and girls
but yes. all communities, because we have just gone through one of the biggest challenge ever known to man in terms of global scale, in terms of it's huge crazy. impact. The mm. pandemic is going to affect our health. There will yeah. be people with breathing difficulty, yeah. weight issues. So this is, so, so for me, it's a, more or less a public health exercise, to yeah. be honest. And, and, really and I'm so happy that Slimming World is on board as well. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. Mm. So I'm just going to let you know, there are quite a few people, and I'm, I'm going to bug them now. I want yes, them to share, do. because we want as many people coming to the walk the walk to end FGM. I know my friend and dear um, um, daughter, Lizette, um, is here. Oh. Susie, Susie, I'm wearing your necklace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, we're going to say we are also doing a fundraiser for women and girls in Sierra Leone because they keep they keep saying we need money to end FGM or we're getting money. Nobody's giving us money, people. Nobody except we are making our own money and we need money. Exactly, that's the handy sponsorship <laughs> so, walk. So go and buy the necklace. I've got one here, but there are unique pieces that Susie from the African Pixie Arena brand has donated to us. And there are lovely bags. They're on the bidding site. Bid now. The bids close on Monday at 12 p.m. And the winners will be announced at 7 p.m. the same day. Drop me your name and tell me which of the items you want so we can put it in the post for you. And that would be money going towards, not a single penny is coming to us, it's going to the girls in Sierra Leone. Now, before I bring Hawa, my colleague, so let me, so Marma Silla is here as well. She says, wow. say, oh, yes. Oh, she says, yes, indeed, Alima, of course I've got to do it now, <laughs> but she's happy. <laughs> <laughs> and my my mate, my mate to Idris Elba, when he when he when he sack tossed, oh. when he mash tossed, <laughs> we don't want him anymore. <laughs> oh, by the way, my partner is gonna be walking. He's been practicing. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, he, he, he means business. Oh yeah, <laughs> he wants to walk this. I'm like, okay. We okay. need men to walk the walk. We want men to walk yeah. the walk. All right, okay. So Florence, a journalist from Sierra Leone, is on here. And my school colleague, my wonderful, beautiful colleague, Glenna from the USA, is watching us. Thank you so much oh, for thank joining you. us. But let me bring my colleague. And how are you stay where you are? Come to stay where you are. Um, I want to bring Howard because you, me, and Howard are like the, the three musketeers. <laughs> We're going to come. So, how are, I'm going to mute Comfort for a while so that you, you have the floor. Why is it so important? Why is, so, is it so important to support Comfort in this work? Uh, for, for me, to support Comfort is a very good idea because if I can reflect back, mm. where comfort has started with us. That's right. It's a long, long, long way. Mm -hmm. Minus campaigning against FGM. When the name alone, comfort, it comforts me That's in right. my own little way yeah. with what I've gone through. Mm -hmm. So bringing the walking to end FDM, it is a big idea hmm. because we've been in for two years mm -hmm. our belly have pop up <laughs> on weights <laughs> so we have guys, <laughs> so it we have good. actually <laughs> it is good for us going out doing the walking yeah. And talking about how we will end FGM in a generation time. That's right. We've been on it for quite a long, long, long time. But mm. we thank God, like especially for we that comes from Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. It was, nobody says about it. Mm. It was a hidden secret. That's right. For us now, we can stand out and talk about FGM. It's a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. Like, if I can reflect a few years back here, 
the day that I open my mouth and talk about my own FGM, mm. it's I don't know if that date we if that days will come again. Mm -hmm. Like in my local area, people we are oh, when I'm when I'm walking around, they will point at my head. Like in parties, they will start saying, "Her, hey, look up in a, mm -hmm. a, a, a pigeon, this with her big mouth. She's talking about our secret society." I said, "Nothing secret. Mm -hmm. Nothing secret again." Like FGM, we can interpret FGM in so many ways. It's mm -hmm. a rape because you, you are not you are, you they do it beyond your 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 your, your knowledge mm -hmm. the rape it brings a lot of stuff to you mm -hmm. like with comfort comfort has done a lot of work mm -hmm. around the world she has she definitely has around the world we have to commend her that's right yes and this this is a new set of way that we campaign to end fdm walking Definitely. around like even we can use it again like we can do it in different different borough like um international women's day yeah mm -hmm. yes we definitely need it in enfield so uh, yeah <laughs> but it, whatever man it does, and feel follows. So I, I'm course. sure they want to hear. <laughs> like 16 days of activism, they mm -hmm. can use one day on That's each. Right. We do the walking. We use another borrow, which is very, very good. This is yes. just the beginning. It's, it's the just beginning. the beginning. Yes. Maybe through the walking, we will end FGM. You yeah. never know. So. so I know the Howard Trust is doing fantastic work in Sierra Leone and in McKinney and all the other places. And you, you've been busy. You have been very, very busy. Now, I know we all want to do something so big in Sierra Leone when it comes to FGM. Yes, we have the constraints. Yes, we have the challenges. But one thing I've just learned from the two of you, it's never to give up, just to keep going. Mm -hmm. People might not be comfortable with what we have to say and might not want to listen. I mean, if I was cursing out here in this Facebook, our pages would have crashed. But because mm -hmm. we're talking about FGM, people avoid the topic. And this is why mm -hmm. we are not able to stop. And we shouldn't stop. And I think one thing I particular have learned from both of you is just to keep going because we now are seeing the change in young people. We yeah. now are seeing women are ever more determined to say no to the practice. We know there are more women now thinking about not cutting their daughters. Mm -hmm. So not just for them, but they're now saying, I don't want it on my daughter. Um, okay, let me give an example. Something yes. happened uh, November. Mm -hmm. My cousin yeah. had two daughters. Because of uh, they've been hearing, I'm talking about FGM. I we call them like in WhatsApp, don't allow your parents. But the aunties of the uh, 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 two daughters from the dad side mm -hmm. came from Jama from uh, uh, Moyamba district to come wow. and take the girls for FGM. Then mm -hmm. the elder one said, no, my auntie in London said it's not good. Oh, they prepare for them. Then the small girl took her mom's phone and phoned me on WhatsApp because my face is there and said, auntie, you see, my other aunties have come. They want to take us for FGM. I said, no. I oh, even so contacted yes. Aminata yeah. uh, at FAB. Wow. Yeah, so we, we are on it for a week. Wow. And the dad is a driver, a truck driver. He was coming from where the 21-year-old girl died. Wow. Then he came. The mom said, oh, your daughters are saying my sister in London has uh, 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 put word in their ears that they are standing. We've done our shopping and this and then they, 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 their father called them. Do you want to go in Bondo? They said, no, we want to further yeah. our education. The hmm. dad said, do you know what happened? In Bond area, a girl died. So mm -hmm. leave them. So the girls, they called me and Aminata, they said, Auntie, our father said we are not going. So that was my new year, 
my end of mm -hmm. yes, yes. my end of last year. Mm -hmm. So those three girls in their area in uh, uh, the east, they are going from place to place. Like in their school, they are saying that please, you see, they want to take us to for Bondo, but we said no. Don't have you been to Bondo? They said no. Don't agree. Well, no. You will die. So you see, it's gradually, gradually, gradually. I know we are unlikable. <laughs> we don't care. Yeah, exactly. We don't care. We are unlikable. The thing is, we're, we're not sorry, 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 to be talk to you, Mama Awa. <laughs> these, these are the things that you're doing. These are the difference you're making in the community that people are not aware of. So we yeah. need to be talking about it. We need to we make loud to noise about yes. what you're doing. Your team, you and your team, they're doing fantastic work in Sierra mm -hmm. Leone. And also yeah. we know other organizations doing similar things. So we need to be saying this out. Not, not many people knew what you did or whether you were on the phone for hours and hours during Christmas period in December. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew. And nobody yeah. knew how many girls you've saved. Within, you know, we need to talk about things like yes, that. We Thank have got to so blow the trumpet. The Especially yeah. in uh, in the dead north, mm. where the Fulanis and the Madingas, you know, we own the FGM and early child marry. Mm. Like now, Ramadan is near. I will be mm -hmm. on the phone for long with girls. Oh, they want to take me to early child marry. I will said no. Give me your mom. No. She's my daughter. I said, mm. no, I want to go to school. Are you the one paying for her? I said, no, but leave her. So it's just, we just have to continue. Yeah, yeah. we have to continue. So yeah. if I can just come in, because I know, I mean, we all work together. So I know what you ladies are up to all the time. And it's such an honor working with the both of you because it, it's, it's, it's a task that's really difficult. And I was saying to somebody recently, I actually was at a point where I, I just felt hopeless because the more we seem to be doing this work, the more people were hell bent on destroying the lives of their children. And I didn't have the energy. I literally was like, I, I've had enough. You know, why don't people see the value in women and girls, particularly mm -hmm. in our community? There are girls doing exceptionally well, where they've been school, women working so hard. But yet still, a community, not any other culture, will they want to promote? Why don't we use education as a culture or where women are su succeeding, whether in business or whatever? We see the children are doing so well, but yet we are holding on to this practice that is destroying lives. So when mm. that young girl died in Sierra Leone, I thought this could be a learning for so many people. So coming up with this exercise of walk the walk, do you think countries, not just Sierra Leone, obviously, but we have Kenya, we have Somalia, we have um, um, Malaysia, Singapore, India, all of these countries worldwide. Do you think it's high time governments, agencies, take the responsibility of protecting their women and girls? I know in Sierra Leone we've been asking, and I'm glad how I mentioned this, a lot of us are just sick and tired of even speaking at now about our work. Because it seems as if our community would rather promote the very people cutting us, but will, will vilify us for doing what we're doing in protecting and safeguarding our women and girls. So literally we're saying we need policies that are put in place to protect mm -hmm. women and girls. Perhaps this, this could be an incentive that might have governments and say, in the process of working around ending FGM, we might bring walk the walk in schools, we might do walk the walk at sports because I'm seeing Mama Silla says she, she likes to walk. And uh, <laughs> who else is here? Oh, Liz Kaima, my colleague, my sister, my little sister in Kenema is here. And Mr. Mill says he will do the walk. <laughs> Thanks, LA. <laughs> and um, oh, Didi, how are you from? Uh, I think Didi's in the UK. Um, hi, Didi, how are you? She hardly comes out, but she always pops up when I'm on the screen. <laughs> I miss her so much. It's been a long time. But yeah, so we only have barely 10 minutes, ladies. Walk the walk to end FGM. What will be your one single call out to communities? I know it's going to come up. We're all going to come out on the day on Sunday. 
We're going to be at this fantastic um, environment, the park. You know, I love green. I love trees. I love the smell of grass. Alima. You know, I love nature. Alima, can I propose something? Yes, please. Uh, like, uh, can we, if all of us can come together mm -hmm. and register under mm -hmm. the marathon, we are not running. We do <laughs> our walking to end FDM. We have our t shirts and Yay. our. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. using phone for yeah. if we can take it to another country, the same work. That's right. I think if we use that idea, maybe we'll see a way that we uh, attract some uh, uh, policy makers. Mm -hmm. We'll bring some policy makers. At the end of the walking, we'll put our campaign down. We start talking yes. because some of them, they only know that it's a, it's a culture. But they yes. don't know if they hear from us, like Sierra Leone, how many people have died? This 21 mm. year and the 19 year old girl, and those girls in Maboroka that died yes. a few years, 2018. That's right. You remember, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. we have been seeing a lot before it mm. was under the carpet. Mm -hmm. If we like they walk into end FGM, if we can put more effort in it, like mm -hmm. a, a marathon day, we register and do our walking. We are not running. We we'll do the walking with them. Mm -hmm. Maybe that will raise some fun awareness. Yes. Well, I like the idea because it's not just. I, I, yeah, I like the idea. It will cover a lot of grounds, health yeah. and well-being, but also, I mean. We don't look after our mental health in Africa, no. sadly. And in countries like Sierra Leone, we don't address the issue of mental health. And walking does address that. It addresses mm -hmm. obesity. Mm -hmm. obesity. It might address even people that want to give up smoking. Yeah. We're now seeing a rise in drug addiction. Maybe mm -hmm. walking might just help. And children don't have a space to play or talk. We do so many things, but maybe walking, taking up walking might help develop our lungs because of so many um, people recently. And I don't know what the statistics are, but a lot of people are dying from um, 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 breathing difficulty. Mm -hmm. we've, been, we've been saying this is linked to COVID, but who knows how do we develop the lungs if we're not inhaling clean air? Walking exactly. will help us do that. So comfort, we have barely seven minutes. Um, <laughs> walk the walk, the global what? comfort. Mm. What message would you have to those wanting to come and participate and do something good for change? It's just after Christmas, the January is ended. You know, it'll be on the a, a good day. You know, the sixth of is it the sixth of February, right? Yeah, this this Sunday, really. Yeah, this Sunday. People say it's next yes. week. No, it is this Sunday, and it's I'm this really. Sunday. Yeah, uh, can I just say I supported what uh, Mama Howard just said, really, yeah. because um, everybody needs to walk. Like I said earlier, it is free. You're not thinking, oh, I haven't got four pounds, you know, or five pounds or some money to, to go to the gym or to do exercise or to do, um, what's it called, yoga or to do Pilates. You mm. go out, I can tell you, since I've been doing this walk, the mm. first thing, once I step out of my house, the breeze, mm. you kind of, the fresh air, the, the, you, you, the, the, the breathing is so, is, you just look around and you enjoy nature. And mm. this particular park, um, Oak Hill Park, has got nature reserve as well. Mm. Um, you have, you see the pond, you see the dogs, you see people walking their dogs. You mm. just talk and talk to people. You mm. say hello to people. And for me, psychologically, talking to people is very powerful. Yes, because again, we've because had a lot of- You never know the good morning, the good afternoon you say to this particular person mean a lot to them. Yes. We were talking about loneliness just two days ago, me and was it with my daughters. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, loneliness is another thing. And people coming out to walk, they come to clear their head, they come to see other people, they come to chat. 
and um, you just stopping to say hello to people, it goes a long way. Yeah, it does. So it does. for me, the walk the walk, yes, it's not just about zero tolerance day, it's about your physical, psychological, and mental well-being. Yes. And tell us again, why? What, what's with the zero, to, um, zero tolerance to FGM day? When did that day came about? I, I always tell people just, this. <laughs> I, I don't remember the, how well, many years. I can Next, tell you. 24, mm. 2004. And 2000, I, yes, I knew it was there. And this was um, supported by um, President Obasanjo's wife. Yes, Stella, Stella Obasanjo. Yes. yes. Of course, she's, she, she, she's dead. She died yeah. many years ago. And yeah. um, she and some of the t um, colleague in United Nations, if I'm right. Yes, and Dr. Maurice more... Sandy now, who is the foreign minister in Guinea. Yeah. And Dr. Kade Kumiate, I start idea. to pray in, in the Gambia, who is now, yeah. what, vice president, I believe. Mm -hmm. so FPM yes. has brought mm -hmm. feisty people, so they got to come and do the feistiness at that mm -hmm. walk mm -hmm. on Sunday. And bring your family along. There will be music, yes. food. Bring gift. your dogs. Bring, bring your, your dog. <laughs> bring everybody. Get out of the house. Go get yes. some. Right <laughs> and um, we have cafe. We have cafe at the park. So you yes. can have brunch. You can have lunch. I've, in, yes. I've informed the cafe team and they're expecting yes. people. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your last word? We've only got four minutes. You and Howard, what would you want to say? for people as a reminder of why this is so important? So one hour. Uh, as for me, uh, mm. I'm asking everybody to come out after the two years who've been in the house, stress, mm. come out and have a fresh year and mm. walk and cut down some facts. <laughs> and we have some <laughs> leaflets. There'll be I've information. So much in me as well. <laughs> How are you talking to me? <laughs> I, guess, I guess for me, um, there's so many people that I haven't seen in two two years, obviously, yeah. because of lockdown and COVID. That's and it, really, it, yeah. it'll be really nice to see them. I've got so many people coming from East London, South yeah. South London, if I can South, say South. South. They're coming South from South London. London. <laughs> They're coming from North London. Crossing the we're, river. We're, we're, we're going to meet in the middle. Exactly. <laughs> meet in the middle. London, <laughs> South London and all that. So it would be really nice to meet up and um, just chat. Chat. Uh, Let's uh, talk. Uh, yes, I have one question. Would that jollof rice be there? Well, will Chin Chin be there? Will Chin -chin be there? <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> you're well, twisting, you're twisting my plan. hand now. <laughs> we'll see. There might be jollof rice. Maybe see, not I, in the I, past, I'm but I'll put some rice. in my in my car. <laughs> there will be jollof rice, definitely. <laughs> Okay, well, ladies, I am ever so proud of the two of you. And yes, Tina, who's left, so very proud. And for anybody who will be taking part, I want to commend you. I want to salute you because you will not know what you are going to be doing to many, many more people. You know, I believe in the passion of humanitarian and giving back to community is something we all thrived on. And it has been so special, particularly in this pandemic. It's through human to human, you know, being there for one another, lending a voice, being there, clapping for our nurses. This oh, is yeah. us giving back to the NHS, you know, mm. because reducing obesity, reducing mental health directly impact what we give back to the NHS. So that is a good thing. And thank you to all your sponsors and your donors and anybody who will be giving and making a difference with this walk. And Comfort and Howard, thank you so much for coming along. Welcome. I just wanted to push you all to get out of the house. <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> thank you so much, Ali Matthew. So and can I just add, we, we're expecting about 60 to 70 people coming. So we have uh, even more than 100. People there might be more, out. but the yeah. ones that we know, you know how we, well, I shouldn't say that. Well, maybe I'll say we're Africans. <laughs> we don't, we just turn up. To think so, there will be so many people coming without letting me know which is good. 
don't wear big gowns and bring your <laughs> kind of clothing. Or... And make sure you come, <laughs> you wear comfortable wears, wear your <laughs> trainers or walking shoes. Don't come with your heels. Yeah, and trainers. Yeah. This yeah. is this is a plus for you, comfort. Somebody's just written, and I'm just reading. It says the statement "walk the walk" is so relevant here. The policymakers should stop take talking the talk and metaphorically start walking the walk. And, oh yes, I'll be there. So I yeah. Oh yes, I am so there. Off in a few minutes, blowing the dust off my trainers, and I will turn the tarmac. Looking forward to being part of this fantastic work with amazing. Excellent. People. Wear your hat and gloves if it's cold. Something exactly. to drink and enjoy nature and like-minded people. Oh. Uh, just to shout out to everybody who's joined us. I can see my other sister. I, I bet you she's in Sierra Leone enjoying the hot weather. She's a mental <laughs> health nurse who talks on the importance of looking after one's mental mm. health. I wish she was close by, because definitely she probably will come. And that's May, my, and Balu, um, Balu Khadija Bangura. She's big on oh. mental health and why it's so important for us to stay healthy. And my dear sister, um, 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 Mabel, Mabel, I, I know you're touring the, the world. Come back. <laughs> And so many people here just wow. wishing us well. Liz says, yes, sis, we're all here. Keep keep doing what you do best. And Eliane, our French sister from Ivory Coast, oh. she loves the idea, by the way, of walk the walk. So maybe that's something West Africa v West um, East Africa v Ooh. South Africa. Who knows? This is a competition. We love competition. <laughs> yeah. Who compete? Who are the yeah. best workers? West Africans or East Africans or South West Africa, Africa. Central Africa? Africans. <laughs> but yeah, everybody's so happy about this. Let's keep doing good. Let's keep thriving. Let's make our community safe because this is what it's all about. Yeah. But ladies, we have gone past the hour. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Have a beautiful evening. And I will see you all on, on Sunday. Sunday. People come and join us. Come and share. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank and you. See you Sunday. Thank Can't you, wait everyone. To see you all on again. Sunday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.